In this video, I'm going to do a deep dive on ChatGPT with Canvas, and I'm going to be comparing it with some of the other competitors that people have been comparing it to. So Cursor, Claude, V0, Bolt.new, which just came out, as well as Replit Agent. The first thing that I like with the Canvas feature is actually its writing abilities. I thought I'd be most interested in the coding ability, but given that I code day to day, I don't think that this is going to be the tool that really replaces the daily drivers. Cursor is probably still going to be the one that I use primarily. But for things like writing, this is quite great. One thing that I really like about this canvas is just the way that it looks. And the big notable feature is that you can interact with it. So you can edit it just like a typical code editor. But the thing that I found with it is there definitely are some bugs. Sometimes I find when I backspace and I go to put the text back, I can't actually undo the text that I got rid of sometimes. So there definitely seems to be some rough edges there. But there are some cool features with this. I can click Ask ChatGPT. I can say, make this longer. And really quickly, it will just target that particular area and update with whatever I asked it for. The other thing here is there are some helpful shortcuts. Some of them are a bit fun. So you can add emojis here. If I just click Add Emojis and submit that, we'll see it will go through the document and it will start to add a bunch of emojis. I'd say in terms of design, it definitely feels quite nice. It's a very simplistic view. I'd say it's arguably more simplistic than probably all of the other options that are out there. What's interesting with this, and this UI decision might be subtle or intentional, but if I hover over this, I actually think that it's probably ordered from the options that are most to least used here. So suggest edits. This is going to be something that is helpful, I find, on the whole, because I'll click this, and what it will do for you is you'll start to see notes like you'd see within a comment pane on something like Google Docs or Microsoft Word. And instead of having a collaborator like a coworker or a client, now it's just ChatGPT. So it's giving you suggestions on maybe different titles. You can briefly explain what the paper is, why it was so influential, and you can take it or leave it. You can just click apply. If you were to click apply, it will just go through and target that piece of text and add what the suggestion was. I think that probably of these different options is the most useful. Now, in terms of the adjust length, I think this is another useful one. This could definitely be something to speed things up depending on what you're doing. So here, if I just go to longest and we submit that, it is a neat UI component that you can just slide it like that. If there's a piece that you want to expand on, maybe you're writing a script or a blog post or a paper, and say if you really want to drill down on a topic, it, it, it's able to do that in just a few clicks there. Now, another thing that I think could be useful in, say, educational context is, is this reading level button. Let's just click reading level and let's bring it all the way down to kindergarten and we'll submit that. But what's interesting with this is transformers are a pretty complicated subject, even for a high schooler. They're pretty complicated, right? Here it's making an attempt to describe Transformers as really smart robots. It has a lot of analogies here. I would imagine if we go through it, we have things about encoding, decoding, BERT, GPTs, RNNs, RSTMs. This is too hard for a kindergarten. Maybe if I didn't have something like Transformers and something more vague or general, in fairness, it would probably be able to do something like this a little bit better. Now the final polish button. Now this definitely could be helpful. Like instead of using something like spell check and clicking through and, and what have you, having it just quickly scan the document to make sure that it's more or less intact. There aren't any obvious errors, like, like, like you don't have any incoherent sentences or you forgot punctuation or any grammar mistakes and stuff like that. And for the emoji use, I don't know, like maybe some people use emojis. I typically don't use that. I don't know if I'd necessarily find that that helpful. But in terms of the text option, this is where it stands out. The options that I'm showing you really are coding related. So it's not necessarily a fair comparison. There are a ton of different GPT powered writing tools that are out there like Jenny AI and others a lot of paper writing tools. I think this is definitely going to be a competitor to those types of tools. Next, what I want to show you is the coding example. I'm going to do a bit more of a comparison to some of the alternatives that are out there. First, I'm going to ask, make me a snake game in HTML. If you were to do this in something like Claude, the difference with Claude is as soon as it would render, it would render that component so you could see it visually. Here, that's one notable thing that's lacking. My theory with this, I think they wanted to differentiate themselves a little bit and not just copy what Claude did, even though a lot of people were asking for it. With that said, I'd imagine they'll probably have a UI renderer 
whether it's before the end of the year or early next year. So that visual UI component. So cursor doesn't really fit here because it is just an IDE, but it does work well when you pair it just locally to your web browser. But if you do something like make a snake game in HTML, if you submit that to Claude, it will be a similar type of experience, obviously a fair bit of a different UI in terms of how it's displayed. But once it's complete, you'll actually have it rendered on the screen here, and then you can play around with it. A lot of people like this, especially for UI development, front-end development, or just novelty things like making these little JavaScript games or what have you. This is something that Claude definitely still has a leg up on when compared to ChatGPT, because you could get that code from ChatGPT, but you'd have to make a file or download it, and there's a bunch of extra steps, whereas this is just instantaneously there. Now, a similar thing with V0, if I just say Game of Snake, with v0 is it biases definitely towards react components and more or less modern web development that's why i like it a fair bit because it's something that i find pretty useful and in terms of best practices it does seem like it does quite well with, with for tailwind classes and shad cnui and stuff like that in terms of ui development if you're anywhere from a hobbyist to a professional th this is probably going to be one of the more useful options now, with that said, there is a brand new tool that just came out a couple days ago called Bolt.new. And this is really one of the more impressive tools. If I say start a blog with Astro, we can just click one of the examples, but you could also type whatever you'd like there. Now install the project, install the dependencies, and then as soon as everything's rendered, you have a working full web app. This isn't just one component that's rendered. This is a whole web app and you can even go and deploy it. I might do a bit of a deeper dive on this tool in particular. I'm still playing around with it. I'm still learning with it. But in terms of my first impressions, this is definitely one of the most impressive full stack web app generators that I've seen out there. So you can just click that option here and then your full stack web app is deployed and you could just go and edit it if you'd like. Say if you wanted to change the code, you could change it within here. You could go within source, find the page that you want to edit. Or you could just go and ask with natural language, like change out this text to say developer's digest. That is definitely a tool worth checking out if you're interested. Now in terms of Replit, I did a video on Replit when it came out. And what I found with this tool is it's definitely quite opinionated. And I found it really biases towards Python environments and simple front ends. It doesn't do as well on front end development than a tool like V0 or this new Bolt tool from First Impressions. It generally simplifies the front end a little bit. And when you prompt it, it definitely tries to steer you in a particular direction, at least when I tried it a few weeks ago. I'd imagine like all of these tools are shipping updates every day. I'd imagine all of them are likely gonna get better. But the other nice thing with Replit is you can deploy it within their platform. That's a similarity to something like Bolt. Now in terms of ChatGPT with Canvas, you can't deploy it like you can on Replit or Bolt. But right now, V0 and Claude don't let you deploy anything. I'm just going to try a simple example. I'm going to say make a express server. We have our simple server. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight a piece of text and I'm going to say add in two routes. So one thing that I noticed with this is it does go through the entire file. Even if you're selecting a certain portion within the code, it's not just going to target this one piece. It's seemingly going through the whole code and my best guess why it's not just streaming out in line is it probably still wants the context of this entire file, but gives you arguably a more coherent answer. There are similar features here on the right hand side. I can click code review here. We can submit this. And this is something that I quite like. So let's say you have a piece of code. You could very well paste that piece of code in here and just have a bit of a code review. So I think that is potentially a good case because you could ask an LLM, like you could paste in a block of text or you could ask something like cursor, but there's something about the UI here where it feels very similar to something like a Google Doc and it does feel new and novel, right? It says consider adding middleware like express.json. We can just click apply to that example. We see it streaming out there. And there we go, we have our middleware. We have our other options here, like it's saying potentially add some error handling. We can just add that. There we go, it's going through the whole file again. Now we have a little bit of error handling. The one thing to note with the code review is it seems to find things every single time. Like you could put in everything and it's gonna make suggestions. It's almost like having a client that just loves to give feedback even if everything is okay. That's just something to be mindful of. Even though it's giving you suggestions, you don't necessarily need to take them, it goes without saying. 
Another cool thing is you can port to different languages. Let's say I want to port this script to Python. I can just click the button to convert it to Python. And there we go. It's a Flask app. So I can just highlight it. And let's say I want to use Fast API. I'll just type in the word Fast API, no other directions. And there we go. That's definitely a handy trick. I think where I would use that is if there's a coding language that I don't typically use. If I just look at one, let's say I click Java here. I haven't used Java in years. If I were to read through a long piece of Java, it's nice that I just have the option where I can just move this to a language where I understand it a bit better. If I submit TypeScript, we can see that example of TypeScript there. Now there is the ability to fix bugs. If you just intentionally add some bugs within your code here, let's just do something like that. We'll go ahead and try and fix these. We made some errors near the bottom of those portions. We see that it fixed that and it looks to fix the bottom one as well. Something that I didn't mention on the document view is you can toggle back and forth with the revisions. But one thing about this is if you restore a previous revision, like if I do this here, I restore this revision, you can't go forward anymore. That's just something to be mindful of when you do go back and then ultimately restore the revision. Another helpful thing is you can add logs here. If I just submit this, we see it's just console logging. If you're trying to debug something within your application, that's a nice feature. But if we compare this to something like cursor, cursor is going to do this directly within our editor, and we don't need to continually copy things back and forth. I think this is really the crux of the issue with this tool, but that's an issue arguably that is within Claude, B0, basically all of these web-based tools right now. And then the last thing you can also add comments to your code as well. One thing that I like with ChatGPT is you have a number of different things built within it. When you have all of the different features, all of the latest models, you're able to generate images and whatnot. You're able to have a canvas to edit text documents, the ability to edit code. One of the big issues with canvas, which I think still is an issue with Claude as well as V0 is you have to copy things back and forth from your editor. Because with Cursor, you're able to do it where your code already exists. Whereas this, it's more you're just going to be setting up maybe a boilerplate or debug something. One of the big issues with this is you're still going to have to copy code, whether it's directly within this, and then potentially copy code back out into the environment and back and forth. There is a fair bit of friction there, and I think a tool like Cursor really shines in this regard. And it doesn't necessarily need to be Cursor. It could be Continue or GitHub Copilot, basically any of those integrated IDEs. Now, with that being said, one big question is whether ChatGPT is going to go after some of these coding tools. They do have a desktop app, and I wouldn't be surprised if they eventually integrate within directly something like VS Code potentially. They're already on the desktop. They have these models. It wouldn't be surprising to me if, say, as a part of your ChatGPT subscription, if you're just able to add an extension where, where it has similar capabilities to something like Continue or GitHub Copilot, I would almost bet that over the next year or 18 months that we'll start to see OpenAI directly compete within that space for the code editors. That's pretty much it for this one. I just wanted to do more of a video showing you, especially if maybe you're on the fence considering whether to buy a ChatGPT Plus subscription. Hopefully you have a better idea on what it can do, can't do some of my opinions on some of the areas. But otherwise, that's it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.